Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the WHS Network here on YouTube.com. Again, as always, I'm Brandon Morvillius. Alongside here with me is cameraman Jordan Ed Beard McCoy. Here with our uh, 2022 IHSAA Class 2A uh, North Semi-State uh, Baseball Preview Show here tonight. Uh, just going to break down uh, these uh, these two teams, Wapahoney and Ileana uh, Christian Vikings, um, which should be a great showdown here between uh, your Raiders there and the Vikings coming up here on Saturday, which we're going to get uh, into all of that. Uh, break down some stats here for um, Ileana Christian and um, what will hopefully be a victorious day at uh, Kokomo Mun uh, Municipal Stadium. Um, it's about a about what a little over an hour, hour and a half, uh, hour, hour and a half drive, uh, and um, you know we've been there back in was it 2017 I believe uh, when we played there in a the semi-state, uh, which then end up uh, we end up getting the W that day and moving on there to Victory Field so hopefully we'll be able to have the same fortunes coming up this Saturday in that uh, tough matchup but um, we'll start off here um, I did want to um, let everybody know because everybody you know there's been a lot of people asking if we're gonna be broadcasting the game or not uh, you know because obviously last weekend we couldn't do regionals because of the site itself it was uh, just a very unfortunate situation. Um, you know, they didn't really have the, the resources uh, to give us to be able to produce a broadcast. Uh, you know, we was told, you know, they didn't have any Wi-Fi. Uh, signal was kind of hard to come by, and there was no electrical outlet for us to plug into. Uh, so if we have no power, we can't do anything anyway, even if we did have all that other stuff. Um, so... That was tough, um, not being able to do that. But uh, when it pertains to this game, uh, this coming weekend, uh, we will not be broadcasting uh, on Saturday for the semi-state. Uh, which uh, the reason for that is I will not be in town. Unfortunately, uh, I had some some plans um, that uh, that was scheduled about a month and a half or so ago. And unfortunately, I can't go back on those plans, uh, you know. And, and so, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we just have to do what we have to do. It's not because I don't want to be there, uh, and I don't want anybody blaming Redbeard or anything like that. Um, but you know, it's something that uh, that I wasn't going to just bail on. I had this scheduled for about a month and a half, and uh, it was before the state tournament schedule even came out, so I wouldn't have even known. Uh, you know what the schedule even look like and not only that I mean you know you hope uh, that our Raiders will make it this far and I'm happy that we did I'm sad that I'm not going to be able to be there to broadcast it um, but I just want to apologize personally uh, to everyone out there uh, you know it's one of the biggest things for me I don't ever want to let anybody down and I hope I'm not letting all of you down by not being there on Saturday. And hopefully none of you are angry with me on that. Um, but it is unfortunate. And like I said, I do apologize. Um, but that's on me. Um, you know, I, I accept that and, and I apologize. And hopefully your Raiders will move on to W uh, this coming Saturday. And We'll move on to Victory Field, and we'll go from there. But uh, that's what we're looking forward to. So we'll go ahead and take a look here at, uh, at Wapahoney first and foremost. We're not going to break down stats for them because we don't want to give anything away. And all of you out there in Raider Nation already know what Wapahoney is all about and what they've done so far this season. Uh, you know, regionals, you beat a very good Eastern Greentown team that I believe was ranked number four in 2A. We were ranked number three coming into that game. And then you beat uh, Carroll Floor, which was ranked number one in two-way. So, I mean, you had two of the top four teams, uh, you know, that you had to knock off to win that regional in which uh, we beat Eastern. Uh, it was 9-3, to three, and then we beat uh, Carroll Floor 11-3. to three. And so, um, you know, we, we had a very good night at the ballpark. Uh, you could say started off the day right and ended it even better. Uh, there with a regional title there on uh, last Saturday there at Carroll Flora, and um, I know a lot of a lot of people made the trip. Um, it's great to have Raider Country come out in groves to support the teams, not only baseball, softball, whatever you know, all all the teams that we have out here. 
uh, these young men and young women uh, love your support, and we love having your support as well. And so we'd love to see you guys uh, there at Kokomo Municipal Stadium coming up on Saturday. it will be a 1 p.m. start time. Um, that will be the first game of the day. Um, which Newcastle will be playing in the 3A game uh, the, uh, following hours. So it'll be nice to have, you know, two teams that are pretty reasonably close here within, you know, 30-minute drive or so playing at the same ballpark. Uh, they're together there on Saturday afternoon. But uh, Wapahoney 24-4 on the season. Uh, there with those two victories there on this past Saturday leading into the semi-state game. Again, taking on uh, Ileana Christian Vikings. 20-7 uh, and seven are the Vikings here on the season. Uh, wanted to break these guys down here, not only from a team stat standpoint, but some key players to really look toward, uh, not only from an offensive standpoint, but even what they have pitching-wise. Um, that you guys can take a look at and kind of expect to, you know, more than likely see coming up this Saturday. Uh, Team-wise, though, uh, batting average with their 343 as a team, they have six home runs, four of those coming from one young man, which we'll get to him here in just a little bit. Uh, but 198 RBIs guys here on the season, also 237 runs scored. They also have uh, 38 doubles, 19 RBIs, or not, not 19 RBIs, 19 triples, and also 110 stolen bases. So these guys get on, and they're able to get each other over by finding a way to steal a base here or there. Um, you know, and you have some guys that are uh, you know more of a threat than others, but as a whole, you know, you have four or five guys that are running on a you know rather consistent basis obviously the key is to keep them off base you won't have to worry about it um, but uh, you know that's kind of what you're looking at there from a team aspect player wise offensively you know you have some guys here like I said you really want to take a really close look at here and one of those is uh, Levi Hescott um, a 368 batter on the season three doubles 12 RBIs. He also have a, has 11 runs scored, and he's stolen six bases. Uh, Tyler Barker, he's a 339 hitter, two doubles, a triple, 27 RBIs, which is second on the team in that statistical category, by the way, and uh, also has 24 runs scored on the year. Um, also, we have uh, Isaac Vanderwood, a young man batting 333, three doubles, also two triples, 15 RBIs. He has 30 runs scored and 19 stolen bases, which is second on the team, like I said, there in that statistical category. Uh, next, we have Kevin Cor Corin. Um, we, uh, I'll tell you what, a young man that's just absolutely teed off on the baseball and uh, a really good pitcher there on the mound as well, which we're going we're gonna to talk about that. So Cor Corin is a 468 average or a 468 hitter, four homers, so four of those six have come just from that one young man. Uh, 34 RBIs here on the season, 11 doubles, five triples, and 30 runs scored. Uh, on the pitching mound, um, he is 3-1 and one with a 2.29 ERA and 39 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's only allowed 32 hits, 18 runs, which only 13 of those 18 have been earned. Uh, and he's also only had 13 walks and 64 strikeouts. Um, so you're you're getting you know relatively close there. I mean you know you're averaging um, you know almost nearly two strikeouts an inning. So two of the three outs is coming via the strikeout. You know so you're getting reasonably close. You know still a little bit ways off. Uh, you're what 14 strikeouts away from um, averaging two strikeouts an inning, but. He gets a ton of strikeouts, doesn't walk a lot of batters, so um, I would say more than likely, you know, if you're going to be facing him coming up on Saturday, I would be in attack mode, um, you know, looking to potentially swing early in the, in the bat to where, you know, if you're getting behind, you know, he might end up eating you alive, um, and, you know, and you're going to be more in a battle mode then, and, you and, um, uh, you know, again, you you want to put yourself in the best position possible from a hitting aspect uh, when you're facing a pitcher of his caliber. Uh, so again, that was Kevin Corcoran. Uh, then we have uh, Ian Van Beek, uh, young man here, batting 421, four doubles, also four triples. 
Um, 18 RBIs, 29 runs scored, and a team leading 22 stolen bases here on the season is Ian Van Beek. On the mound, uh, he is 2-2 two two with a 1.58 ERA and 31 innings pitched. He's allowed 23 hits, only 9 runs. Seven of those have been earned. He also has only allowed 4 walks and 44 strikeouts. So if you thought that uh, Corcoran was a uh, it was a good pitcher, this young man can dial it up there as well. Um, just very uh, under control. You know, he's in command of his pitches. You know, I, I was able to, because I went and kind of looked at some stuff um, pitching-wise as far as some video within the last day or so to kind of get a feel for what these guys can provide. Again, even though I'm not going to be there, I want to still be able to relay the information to all you guys. Um, but, you know, definitely has command of all of his pitches and is very uh, intelligent of the strike zone and, and where, you know, basically where he can get the opponent out, um, you know, as far as, you know, being able to work the corners, go on high uh, or, or, or uh, high and low in the zone and recognizing what the hitter's weaknesses are. So it's going to be important, again, if you're Wapa Honey facing him potentially on Saturday, that you keep that in mind going into that uh, uh, that semi-state matchup. Uh, and then the last pitching uh, arm that we really want to look at here is um, Austin Maslanka, um, a young man, 3-0 and uh, on the season here, 2.10 ERA and 20 innings pitched. He's allowed 14 hits, 10 runs, six of those have been earned, and he's all, he also has collected 10 walks along with 34 strikeouts. So those are the three arms more than likely that pose the biggest threat uh, to Wapahani offensively that uh, has seen sustainable success throughout the course of the year leading into this semi-state game uh, there from Kokomo uh, Municipal Stadium and what will be a, uh, like I said, a, a tough matchup uh, here for Wapahani. You know, you get to this part of the year, uh, you know, we've seen teams' best pitchers all the way through pretty much. Um, and uh, you just got to roll with the punches. You know, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep grinding, keep fighting each and every single day. You know, I know that, uh, you know, we, you know, on our way out here, uh, you know, we've seen them, you know, heading to practice. And, um, we'll talk about Wapahani, that is. And it's going to be so important, you know, this last day or so to have the right mindset, stay focused, you know, get plenty of sleep leading into that game there on Saturday, especially tomorrow night. You know, you want to get a good night's rest, be energized, be ready, you know, ready and ready to go and be prepared uh, for that uh, that Saturday afternoon matchup there with uh, Eliana Christian. So, we're looking forward to it. Um, Redbeard will be there coming up on Saturday. Um, he'll be there updating uh, the scores wise on our social media sites. Uh, so make sure to follow us on Twitter at WHS Network and then WHS Network on Facebook as well. Uh, we'll be posting the uh, the score updates throughout the ball game on there. Uh, and please come on out, support the team. Um, you know it's about a hour hour and a half drive um really super nice ballpark i believe it's a minor league stadium and it's just a uh, it's a really a neat setup um for hopefully bigger things coming up next weekend potentially um and so you know that's that's the thought behind all that you know that's the thought behind every game especially this time of the year uh, you know, you're looking to advance, uh, you know, live another day and, and continue on and make it to that championship game. But a lot of work has got to be done from both sides for Wapahoney and uh, the Vikings here as well. And uh, what should be a, uh, an, a interesting and very um, close matchup coming up on Saturday. And um, we hope you all can make the trip. Like I said, it's a 1 p.m. start time from Kokomo Municipal Stadium, um, and uh, Wapahoney will look to uh, look to advance to the state championship game, which will be at Victory Field next Saturday or potentially next Friday, depending upon the schedule. And if we make it, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. But that's our hope and that's our thought, and uh, and hopefully that will come to fruition coming up uh, this coming Saturday. So we hope you all. 
um, have just enjoyed you know a little bit of this here you know like I said we just want to get on here make sure to express you know what uh, to look to you know when it comes to our opponent on Saturday what they look like because you know I mean we don't have anybody around here that plays them obviously we don't play them during the regular season so everybody's going to want to know you know hey what are we up against well that's what you're up against right there and uh, we're hoping Wapa Honey is going to be victorious um, but again uh, Red Beard will be covering it on Saturday I will not be there again I apologize don't be mad at me uh, we'll, we'll move on from here so looking forward to it looking forward to a great ball game there on Saturday afternoon we thank you all for tuning in and until next time I'm Brandon Morvillis alongside cameraman Jordan Red Beard McCoy have a great day and we'll see you next time here on the WHS Network